Service providers are a great place to turn whenever you need to bootstrap something inside of your Adonis.js application. So for example, if you need to take a package that's not necessarily meant for Adonis, maybe just regular old Node.js package, and provide it within your Adonis.js application, you can wrap that up and then register your binding within a provider which would then provide it throughout your entire Donis.js application. And we'll be going over an example for that here in a minute. Now, that's not the only use case. Uh, so let's first hound down what other use cases might be. So service providers can also be used for event listeners, middleware, routes, extending Adonis as a whole. So within an earlier lesson, we went over setting up a route provider and we went through registering some route extensions by defining some macros for the route module, route groups, brisk routes, route resources, and that fun stuff there. And we even defined our own route matcher as well. So service providers are great for extending Adonis in addition to providing packages from outside of Adonis. Now there's one really important thing to note whenever you're working with service providers, and this is actually noted up at the top of service files whenever you generate it using the ACLI. And that's that your application itself is not actually ready whenever this file, your service provider file, is imported by Adonis.js. So if you try to import something that uses the IOC container within the top level of this file, it's going to cause an error. And that's because the IOC container is not yet ready at that point in time. So if we take a look over at our app provider here, you'll notice that the methods that we are stubbed out here are actually lifecycle methods. So as Adonis reaches a different point within the application's lifecycle, each individual method will be called when that point is received. So Adonis.js will import our service provider, and then whenever it's registering IOC bindings, it will call the register method for each provider that's registered. Whenever the IOC container is ready, it will call the boot method. Whenever our application as a whole is ready, it will call the ready method. And whenever our application's in the process of shutting down, it will call shut down. And it will do this for each provider that is registered within our application. Now, whenever you use the ACLI to create a provider file, Adonis.js will take care of the registration automatically for you. However, if you would like to manually register your providers by creating a new provider file, you want to register them within your adonisrc.json file. There is a specific providers array within here. And this is where you would go about registering your service provider. So let's go ahead and run through an example of taking a package that's not necessarily meant for Adonis.js, but just Node.js as a whole, wrap it up so that it's nice and easy to work with, and then provide it as a binding within our Adonis.js application. So for this example, what we're gonna be doing is taking the node discord logger package. We're going to wrap it up. We're going to provide it a nice simplistic API for us to use within our application. And then we will provide it as a singleton throughout the remainder of our application using a service provider binding. So first let's go ahead and install this package. So let's go ahead and copy that. Let's jump into our terminal here and get that installed. Now, whenever it comes to creating service providers, there's two approaches. You can manually create it or you can use the ACLI. So let's go ahead and go about the ACLI approach for right now. So node ace make provider. And let's take a look at the help options that we have available here. So you can see here that the argument that it accepts is the name of the provider. We have an ace flag here that will tell it to register the provider underneath the ace providers array. And then we have an E flag to tell it to match the name that we exactly provided. So it will bypass those normalizations that Adonis.js does. So let's go ahead and make our provider here. So let's run node ace make provider. Let's go ahead and call this log provider. We'll make it generic so that we have the availability to register additional loggers within the future. So let's go ahead and get that created. Let's jump back into our application here. And you're going to notice firstly that it does go ahead and register the provider within the providers array within our adonisrc.json file. Now, I actually want to change the structure here a little bit of what we have going on. So I want to put these inside of a folder. So let's go ahead and create a new folder and let's call this our log provider. And let's move our log provider into that folder. And then let's go ahead and rename this to index so that it is the default import for our log provider. Next, what we wanna do is go ahead and wrap that node discord logger up into a nice nifty API that we can then register within our provider here. So let's go ahead and create another file within here and let's call this discord.ts since this will be specific for our discord logging. Let's go ahead and import the discord logger from node discord logger. And let's go ahead and export default a class called logger and we'll maintain a protected internal instance of our discord logger within here as logger and this will be of type discord logger so we'll want a constructor so that we can set that so we'll do this logger equals new discord logger now you'll notice that the discord logger does take a set of options so additionally what we can do is we can provide a default configuration for this so within our config directory let's go ahead and create a new file let's call this log.ts we can put all of our log configurations within here but for right now it will just be our discord logger so let's go ahead and import emv from at ioc adonis core 
env and let's export a const discord logger config equals and we'll set that to an object it will have a hook property that we can grab from the environment variable and we'll call this environment variable discord webhook and we'll have one more property here called service name and we can again get this from the env so env.get and let's just set that to the node env for right now so this will be just a little string that it puts down at the footer of each of our messages so we'll log out whether or not we're in development or in production by setting that to the node env of course should be capitalized there there we go that's better let's go ahead and finish out our discord class here so in addition to just creating we're also going to want to accept a custom config so within our constructor here let's do config type of discord logger config and we can import that from our config log configuration and then we will provide that into our discord logger okay so now we have the instance of our discord logger ready to go let's go ahead and just wrap it up in a nice simple api for right now so let's do a private method we'll call this build and it will take in a title of type string and an optional message of type string object or an array of any and then all it will do is we'll return back message of type title and a description that is stringified. So we'll stringify our message, set that to null, and we'll indent it by four spaces. So for each method that we provide within here, we're just going to call build to actually build out the underlying message that's returned. So let's go ahead and do a public async info that will take in a title of type string and a message, which will be optional of type string object array of any, and this will return this logger info and then we'll call this build and provide it the title and the message and pretty much we'll just copy and paste this a couple of times okay and then we'll have in addition to info we'll have warn error debug and a silly message and then we'll just change each of these methods that are called off of our logger to match so warn error debug and silly. Okay, so we've successfully wrapped up our node discord logger into an API that we like that we can now provide to our application using our log provider. So let's go ahead and jump into the index file within here. And since we are using bindings within our discord log provider here, we are referencing config, which then also references the EMV from the IOC container within our actual configuration file. What we need to do is instead of importing it at the top level, as this note right here suggests, instead what we actually wanna do is import it within the method that we would then want to use it within. So as a whole, what we wanna do is we want to register a binding for our log provider. So it would make the most sense to do this within the register method, since this is where we are supposed to register bindings within our service provider. So we can do this app, and then within app, we have available to us the IOC container right here that we can then make use of. So we can do container dot, and then there's two methods here that we might want to use. There's a method called singleton, and there's a method called bind. We'll go over the difference between the two here in a second. First, for this, we're gonna want a singleton. Let's take a look at the API for it first. So the first argument is going to be the binding namespace, the namespace that we want to bind whatever we are creating the singleton for to. In this case, let's go ahead and call logger slash Discord, since this is specifically the Discord logger that we're creating. And then the second argument is a callback function where we return back whatever we want to be resolved whenever we try to import this singleton by the namespace. Now, the difference between singleton and the bind method is that bind will call this callback anytime that we try to import from the IOC namespace. Whereas singleton will only call this callback one single time throughout the entire lifetime of our application and then it will use that same return value for each time that we import from our IOC namespace. So if we wanted to maintain the connection for our Discord webhook, we would want to use singleton so that that webhook connection isn't recreated every single time that we import our logger Discord namespace. Now that we have our singleton here, what we need to do is define what should be returned back for the singleton value. And for that, we would want to create a new instance of our Discord logger class. So first what we're gonna want is our config to provide into our constructor for our class. So to import the configuration, let's do const, and then we have this as a non-default export. So this will be discord logger config equals, okay, so we can do this 
app and then within the app property again instead of using container we want to instead use config so that we can import a configuration item and then off of config we can call get to get a particular configuration and then all that we need to do is provide it the actual key that it should get the config by and that key would be the file name that we have it defined within the config directory so in our case it's going to be log so let's just provide it log there. And then what that will do is it will return back whatever is returned from the log file. So in this case, we have just our non-default export discord logger config, which is why we are spreading that out of the object that's returned from our log config. Okay, so we have our configuration for our class instance. Next, we need to import and instantiate our discord logger class. For this, we can return new. Let's wrap this up in parentheses, a require call to dot slash Discord, so we'll relatively import from our index provider file over into our discord.ts file. We will grab the default return value from that, and then all that we need to do is call our parentheses and provide it the discord logger config. This particular syntax here might be a little confusing if you're not familiar with it, so what we are essentially doing is in one line we're doing const discord logger equals require slash relative discord.default and then instead of the having the parentheses here, all that we're doing is calling new discord logger and then providing it the discord logger config. If you'd prefer to have a more readable approach, you could do it this way as well. Okay, so last thing, since we're defining a namespace here, what we need to do is inform TypeScript about this new namespace that we have within our application. Once we inform TypeScript about it, we are all set to go and we can then use the namespace within our application. So within our contracts directory here, I'm gonna stick with the slash approach that we have here. So I'm gonna define a new directory and then I'm gonna define discord as a sub file within that new directory. So let's do logger slash discord.ts. And what this does is it gives us pathway to add additional loggers. So maybe if we wanted a Slack logger in the future, we could provide a slack.ts within the logger provider. We could export a Slack logger config within our config file, and then we could add a Slack logger file to our contract directory as well. So within our contract logger discord.ts file, let's go ahead and declare module. And then whenever we provide the namespace within our service provider, we do not want to prefix this with at IOC colon. We don't want to pre prefix it with that there. All that we need to do is provide the underlying namespace that we want this to be bound to. However, whenever we define this as a module for TypeScript, we do want to use this as at IOC colon to inform it that we want to import it from the IOC container and define this as an IOC container import to TypeScript. So once we have the at IOC colon prefix, we then provide the same name that we provided to our singleton object right here. So just logger slash discord. So logger slash discord, call that as an object. And then within here, all we wanna do is create the instance of our discord logger and export it out. So in TypeScript's version of this, what we'll do is we'll import the type of logger from, and we can import this directly from the providers directory. So providers, log provider, and discord. And we'll tell TypeScript that we want an instance of this by doing const, discord logger of type logger, and then we'll export default discord logger. So we're importing the type from our providers log provider discord file. And this is our logger class from the log provider discord file. So this class right here. And then we're telling TypeScript that we wanna have a property called discord logger that we then export out as the default export anytime that we try to import from IOC logger slash discord. And that will be of the type of our logger class from our log provider discord file. And that's all that we need to do to inform TypeScript about that. So lastly, what we need to do is actually grab a webhook from discord and provide that within our environment variable. So let's jump into Discord. I've already set up a simple channel here. What I'm gonna do is go into edit the channel, go down to integrations, and then we have webhooks here. I already created one. So all that I need to do is copy the webhook URL like so. Go back into our editor, go down to env, call this Discord webhook, and provide it like so. So I'm gonna delete this webhook after I finish up this recording. So I'm not worried about this being publicly available because it won't exist here in a second. But once we have this defined within here, let's go ahead and set it up within our environment variable TypeScript definition as well. So we'll have discord webhook and that will be an env schema string. 
So that's just gonna require a value for our Discord webhook environment variable before our server will be allowed to start up, which will inform us that the environment variable itself is missing whenever we boot our server instead of throwing an error whenever we try to actually use our Discord logger here. Okay, so now that we have that provided, we should be ready to go to actually use our logger. So let's jump into our post controller and now we can actually import this using the IOC container. So let's import Discord logger. And you'll notice here that I also have autocomplete options coming up here as well. So if I hit tab here, it will ask me, do you want to import that from node Discord logger? Or would you like to import that from the IOC container? And let's go ahead and import it from the IOC container. So it's at IOC colon logger slash Discord, exactly as we defined it within our contract here. And then what that returns back to us is the new instance of our Discord logger class that we have defined within our service provider. So if we try to go down into say our store method here and make use of it, we can await discord logger dot. And then you can see that we have those methods that we defined in our wrapper readily available to us. So we can do info and then we can provide it a title, new post created. And then since we have various ways that we can provide information and it's stringified, we can provide an object, we can provide an array, uh, whatever we might need here. So let's go ahead and just provide the date time. So let's go ahead and save that. Let's get our server up and running. So npm run dev. Let's go ahead and open up Insomnia. We'll want to switch this to a post request for our posts endpoint, and let's send this off. And so now we got back our response. You'll notice that we didn't get any notification and that's because I am recording. So Discord will pick up on that and it won't send out a little toast notification for me. But if we jump back into Discord here, you'll see that we now have this message new post created with the date time that was provided within our controller. And then you'll also see that the node EMV that we have provided is being dropped right there as well. So we're in development. So that all seems to be working just fine. Additionally here, if we go ahead and jump back into our log provider here, one other thing to note is that if we actually wanted to use our Discord logger within one of our providers, we can do that. Um, you don't want to do that within the register method because it's still registering your bindings. So if you use your Discord logger in a different logger file, it's not guaranteed to be registered whenever you try to utilize it within the register method. So instead, what you want to do is use it within the boot method. So if we come down to the boot method here, we can import it by doing const logger equals this app. And then off of the IOC container again, we can call use to import a particular registered namespace. So here we're already telling it that we wanna use the IOC container by calling it off of container. So we don't need to provide the at IOC colon prefix. Instead, we can just provide logger slash discord and it will be readily available to us. And this will be a synchronous call. You also have available if you want async, a use async method that you can use the same way. Just tack an await on here, just like a normal promise. But whenever we just use use, that is synchronous so we can immediately use it right afterwards. So we can do silly and we'll do discord logger registered. And if we go ahead and save that and reboot our server, jump back into here, you can see, oh yeah, it restarted whenever I made the change. And then whenever we restarted our service, it also ran it there too. So that is working a-okay as well. So there's a little bit of information on how to wrap an external package into Adonis.js using service providers, a little bit of information on what service providers are and how to use them, in addition to how to register things using the IOC container as either a singleton or a binding.